Thank you very much. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, Prominence Energy. We're a small company with large prospects, and I'm the quarterback. Um, so that's our usual disclaimer. I'll let you read it later. It's uh, on the release. Um, so a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, Prominence is an ASX-listed company. Code is PRM, and our headquarters are in Perth. Uh, our focus is keeping costs very low, and our leverage the success exceedingly high. What we believe is that com investors like companies that have tremendous leverage to success. So what we seek to do is find very high return on investment sector, energy sector opportunities that we can secure at as close to ground floor valuations as possible. Uh, we're focused primarily on conventional oil and gas, but we also look at things like carbon sequestration, hydrogen, helium, and the likes. Um, our current focus is on the new project that we just picked up in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Big Apple Prospect. It's a very large gas prospect with what we think is a very good chance of success. Just to show you that we don't just do conventional oil and gas, we have a 10.9% uh, interest in eco storage solutions, which has an early mover advan uh, advantage, seeking to establish uh, salt mine solu salt m solution mined salt caverns in various parts of Australia that may be used for uh, gas storage, hydrogen storage, or for long term carbon capture and, and utilization. Um, we are constantly reviewing new venture opportunities and uh, we look at a lot of them. It's very hard to find ones that fit within our investment strategy criteria, but we have found a few over the time. So the key highlights at the moment, uh, the big thing, uh, it's taken a year to get us there. Uh, it was a little over a year ago we first identified this opportunity uh, to pick up in, in, in a bid round, uh, is the Big Apple prospect. It's in the Gulf, located in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, over two blocks, and we were just granted it in July of this year with a five-year term. This is the sort of thing that perfectly aligns with our investment strategy. It's cost us less than a million dollars to pick up, and with greater than a TCF of potential, it's worth uh, many hundreds of times what we are as a company. Uh, our plan is to uh, continue to work it up, seek a farm out partner, and uh, to help us fund the exploration well, and we should be ready to launch that process early in 2024. We have some other assets which I won't focus on particularly today. We have a small oil field development uh, pending in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, which does have some reserves that is subject to uh, drilling of a, a development well and tie back to a nearby production facility. We have a legacy asset in WA519P, uh, which is where we drilled uh, the Sassanoff well last year. Uh, the well was drilled on time and on budget, but unfortunately it didn't find any gas. Um, and then uh, the eco storage solution. As I said, uh, we are at ground floor valuation at the moment, uh, post the unfortunate result at Sassanoff, uh, but now we're reset with a new opportunity in Big Apple. Um, we did a 20 for 1 consolidation in the middle of this year, and that reduced our share number down to 121 million shares on issue. Our share price is about two cents. Uh, we just raised some capital, uh, announced that, uh, that we've placed 32 and a half million shares at two cents. So we've got a market cap of about $3 million and uh, uh, cash in the bank of about a million dollars. I'm a petroleum engineer with 25 years in the industry. My first 10 years was a consultant uh, at Troy Okoda, um, very similar to risk. I know risk will say that I'm far superior, but uh, we look, what that meant was that I could look at hundreds of projects on a worldwide basis. After that, I moved into executive management roles, the CEO of Otto, CEO of Mosaic, 2IC at Q. Uh, I was a managing director at Tamasca and TMK Montney, and a commercial advisor at Transurf. All told, that means that I've looked at all sorts of projects all over the world, uh, particularly Australia, Asia, and the US. Ian is our chairman. He's got 30 years of experience. He's a finance background, and he's had a lot of experience with small resource companies, including Eureka Energy and other resource companies. Troy is our third director, makes up pretty much the rest of the team. Uh, he has 27 years of oil and gas, including 12 years with Woodside. Notably, he spent two and a half years based in Louisiana, as Vice President of Woodside's Gulf of Mexico, in charge of Woodside's Gulf of Mexico portfolio, and he's also got small company experience with TAP and Global. Sonu is our uh, CFO and company secretary. So I'll talk a bit about our portfolio, but primarily about the Big Apple prospect. 
This is a summary. I won't read this one out, uh, but you can look at it later. So Big Apple, uh, where is it and how did it come about? Um, it's located 200 kilometers south of Houston, about 90 kilometers offshore uh, in the Brazos South Edition area. It's on the shelf. It's in about 75 meters of water, so um, it, it can be drilled with a jack up. What's great about the U.S. is you uh, can pick things up by leasing the acreage. You don't have any firm well commitments. You don't have any uh, ongoing work program that you must undertake. So the holding cost for this is around $57,000 per block uh, each year. If we don't like what we see, we can drop it, and there's no more costs. There's no obligations. Uh, but we believe that this is quite a good prospect, and we're going to be looking for a partner to participate in the drilling. So where are we uh, in board of us? There's plenty of historical gas fields. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico, as you, I'm sure you're aware, is a very prolific area. There are gas fields in board of us, and there are deep water gas and oil fields out board of us. Uh, quite notably, uh, Exxon has just picked up a vast swathe of acreage across these historical fields, which have been uh, off production for a number of years, presumably uh, with a view to doing carbon sequestration into them. Uh, we're in a great location, there's uh, infrastructure around us, and because it's the Gulf of Mexico, uh, rig availability, service companies, equipment, is all, fr is all quick to, uh, to, get, to get, get together. Um, notably, we're just south of Freeport, which is where, the LNG pl where, where one of the LNG plants are. So there's a map of the infrastructure, uh, Big Apple is here. The closest pipeline with Ullig in it is only 15 miles away. That connects us into the major gas network that can, be, can feed any one of these uh, LNG liquefaction facilities, but particularly Freeport, uh, Corpus Christi, and Sabine Pass. The rise of LNG in the US has been nothing short of meteoric. 10 years ago, they didn't produce, uh, they didn't export any LNG. Uh, the U.S. is a giant gas market. It consumes over 100 BCF of gas a day, and the U.S., by the end of this year, is set to be the large, world's largest uh, LNG exporter by country. LNG uh, exports have averaged around 11.6 uh, BCF a day in the first half of 2023, and are set to rise to 20 BCF of gas uh, by 20, at the end of 2027. The gas demand is rising rapidly, uh, gas production in the last decade has come largely from the, the shale plays in the U.S., but a lot of those have, uh, have stabilized off. Uh, even, the Marcellus, oops, uh, even the Marcellus, which is uh, the biggest, uh, production has been pretty flat at about 25 BCF. A lot of these plays are quite dependent on debt, and so uh, as the interest rates have gone up, uh, the drilling rate has slowed, and util rig utilization in these plays has dropped by a third from what it was a couple of years ago. We're located just south of the Freeport LNG facility in due east of Corpus Christi, and at over a TCF prospective resources, uh, Big Apple would be material to these LNG projects. So a little bit about where it came from. So a geologist or geo geoscientist, geophysicist, who is uh, in the audience today, uh, he was once upon a time working for one of the major uh, oil and gas companies it working the deep, air, deep water area uh, where the Diana field is. That company uh, had a seismic line that was up, shot up onto the shelf uh, to tie into uh, the known geology up on the shelf. And uh, he saw this uh, rather attractive looking amplitude uh, which was quite comparable to the Diana field. These are on the same scale. Diana is a, a large uh, deep water gas and oil prospect I think it's over uh, a couple of TCF of recoverable gas. Um, so he took it to his uh, uh, employer at the time, and they said, I'm sure it's very nice, but we only do the deep water. Uh, a few years later, he was working for another major in the deep Gulf of Mexico, and uh, he took it to them, and they said, I'm sure it's very nice, but it's, uh, we only do the deep water. So when he came back to Perth, he still had it in his bottom drawer in the back of his mind, and came to approach uh, my former chairman, Yap, and uh, he told us about it. And we did a bit of work and looked at it, and we bought some seismic, and we did some ABO work, and we agreed with him that it looked pretty good. So we've given him a 1% royalty if it's success, 
and uh, moving forward. So we pre-qualified for a bid round and we bid on this block and we picked it up and it was awarded in, uh, in July of this year. The Big Apple Prospect sits in 75 meters of water. It's at a depth of about 2,600, 2,700 meters. It can be drilled from a jack up. And the drilling cost on a dry hole cost basis would be less than $15 million. So we think this is doable and, uh, and very attractive. Uh, the AVO work, so AVO is what you do to, to, to get the best out of your seismic. And if you've got a gas-filled sand, uh, with, uh, it has better contrast than a water-filled sand. And so you look for an, uh, an AVO anomaly. And a class three AVO anomaly in, is a good indication that it's probably ga a gas-filled sand. In the middle of our sa main sand, we've got a very strong class three AVO anomaly. Uh, deep, deeper down is a class four, which uh, is probably residual gas, or if we're uh, incredibly lucky, an oil leg. And the AVO work identified a secondary sand, which was less obvious on the, the raw seismic, uh, that could be 10 or 15 meters thick. Um, overall, it's quite a, quite a promising um, uh, looking prospect. We uh, bought all the seismic, we've mapped it up. Uh, we've got foot three blocks across the, uh, the, the, the structure and the two sands. Uh, we gave this to Netherlands Sewell, the uh, US equivalent of, of risk. Uh, they checked our numbers, they did a probabilistic estimate, and they were looking at a total 2U, so that's undiscovered, most likely case, of about 1.7 TCF of gas. Now our net, net, working, net revenue interest after royalties payable to the government and to that geoscientist, if he's as lucky as he will be, uh, will be 80.25%. So our net resource, prospective resources is about 1.37 TCF of gas right next to the world's biggest gas market. Um, to put that in context, if we make that discovery, and it'll either be there or it won't be there, uh, but if it is, we could, you can sell gas, uh, unde undeveloped gas in the US in this sort of area for at least 25 cents an MCF in the ground. So that would be worth, two, uh, if, assuming we kept a third of this for a free carry through the well, uh, that would be worth $200 million or about 100 times what our current market cap is. So just in summary, uh, we've got our big gas, uh, big Apple gas opportunity. We're uh, working that up uh, ahead of uh, the plan to farm it out next year. Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, planning permitting times, rig availability is such that we should be able to drill about six months after we've secured that partner. Uh, we're working up trying to find a, a partner to help share in the development of the bowsprit, which is uh, which could yield uh, good cash flow to fund higher, uh, high, uh, uh, higher impact opportunities. And hopefully, uh, Eco Storage Solution will be going to IPO later the, uh, sometime in the next 12 months. We're constantly reviewing new venture activities. And the problem is you can't talk about them until they're crystallized. But there are things in progress. So with that, I'll say thank you very much. I'll be around at the conference for the rest of the day. If you've got any questions, I'll be delighted to talk to you. Thank you.